and strengthen East Rail's role as the strategic North-South Railway Corridor and meet Hong Kong's demand for domestic and cross-boundary rail services well into the future. The 1.1-kilometer Chim Sa Choi extension brings East Rail southwards from the original terminus at Hong Hom to a new station in Chim Sa Choi. It takes KCRC back to Chim Sa Choi District for the first time since the terminus was relocated to Hong Hom in 1975. The civil works for the Chim Sa Choi extension were packaged into four contracts. These included modifications to the existing station at Hong Hom to allow the extension of two tracks to the new station in Chim Sa Choi, construction of the railway tunnels under Salisbury Road, construction of East Chim Sa Choi Station, and construction of the pedestrian subways connecting KCR and MTR. The groundbreaking ceremony in April 2001 marked the official start of the project works. Constructing a massive civil project in a congested urban area was a huge undertaking. Not only did the contractors have to work in a limited space with restricted access, they also had to be careful of sensitive structures and utilities along the way. Because of these concerns, the contractors used the cut and cover method for tunneling and extensive road decking to avoid disturbing traffic in this very busy tourist and commercial center. By the use of this method, the contractor firstly carried out the excavation and then installed temporary decking to enable normal road traffic. While construction activities could be continued underneath the decking. This would minimize the disturbance to road traffic during the construction stage. Another challenge was working next to the existing Cross Harbor Tunnel, the major trunk road connecting the Kowloon Peninsula and Hong Kong Island. The tunnels pass over the Cross Harbor Tunnel by less than half a meter and tightly fit between the Hong Kong bypass piers and below the road structure. To avoid causing damage to the Cross Harbor Tunnel, the contractors carefully exposed its roof by hand then sprayed an additional waterproof membrane onto the roof to protect it from seawater. There was also the danger of disrupting the gas mains that serve 200,000 households in Hong Kong Island. The solution was to build temporary supports for the mains prior to tunneling. The construction of East Chem Sa Choi Station was not as complex, as all works could be carried out behind hoardings. Covering an area of about 30,000 square meters, this underground station was built on two levels. The greatest challenge was to coordinate the station works with the works on the Salisbury Road underpass to avoid disrupting road traffic. Also important, was preserving the historic Signal Hill site next to the station. To accommodate passengers, an extensive pedestrian subway was built along Modi Road, Blenheim Avenue, Signal Hill, and Middle Road. Because Modi Road is very narrow, with many buildings close by, the works were carried out in phases, section by section. Despite all these challenges, the civil works progressed without any major hitches.
Once the civil works were substantially completed, it was time to start putting in the railway systems. The contractors began laying the tracks to connect Hung Hom Station and East Chemsa Choi Station after the opening of the new mid-level concourse. The challenge here was to carry out the works without disrupting East Rail service. The East Rail Control Center, the heart of the East Rail system, was upgraded first. Then, intensive testing of the railway systems for the Chimsa Choi extension were carried out. The same overhead line system for East Rail was used for the new extension. In the final stage, KCRC held trial runs. These were the first to be carried out on an existing railway line by the corporation. On the 24th of October, 2004, the Chimsa Choi extension came into service. The first of the three East Rail extensions to be commissioned. It now carries passengers along East Rail from the Northeast New Territories into the heart of Chimsa Choi on one railway journey. Ma'an Shan Rail was the other East Rail extension authorized by the Hong Kong government in October 2000. It runs from Wu Kai Sha in Ma'an Shan. Altogether, nine stations were built along this 11.4 kilometer railway. All of them are within 10 minutes walking distance of 80% of the population. The civil works for Ma'an Shan Rail were packaged into four major contracts. Wu Kai Sha to Shek Moon, Shek Moon to Tai Wai, Tai Wai Station, and Tai Wai Maintenance Center. Ma'an Shan Rail is the only KCR railway line that runs entirely above ground. About three quarters of the alignment, or about 8.4 kilometers, is built on viaducts. The first step in building a viaduct is to construct piles, pile caps, and the viaduct piers. When the piers are ready, gantries are set on the piers. Precast segments are then placed in position along the span glued and stressed together. The gantry is then moved forward to work on the next span. Because of the viaducts, the railway does not affect existing roads and ground level facilities. Constructing the viaducts, though, was a challenge, as they had to be built within a narrow corridor along the center of a busy highway, crossing several trunk roads. Much of the construction had to be carried out late at night, often under extremely challenging conditions. Building the viaduct across Tate's Cairn Highway in June 2002 was especially challenging. Working after midnight, when northbound traffic could be temporarily closed off, the contractors erected a 24-meter portal beam weighing 200 tons across the northbound carriageway. Controlling noise in this densely populated area was another challenge. To reduce noise from the operating railway, KCRC developed an advanced multi-plenum noise attenuation system. 
Rails were sandwiched in between rail noise absorbers to minimize the noise from the wheels and rails. These were put on a floating slab supported by rubber bearings to further reduce vibration and noise. Sound absorbing materials were also applied liberally on the central T structure between tracks and the viaduct parapets, which together form an almost enclosed space to trap any noise that could have reached the parapets. Yet another challenge was to keep East Rail operating smoothly during construction. Since the south end of Ma'an Shan Rail is only two meters away from the existing East Rail tracks, work had to be carried out after 1 a.m., following the close of East Rail traffic. Tai Wai, the interchange station with East Rail, was expanded to three times its original size. The largest of the Ma'an Shan Rail stations, it covers an area of about 19,700 square meters. For the convenience of the nearby community, it provides a 24-hour pedestrian subway. As the subway had to be built in the East Rail embankment, horizontal pipe piles were jacked into the embankment to form an inverted U-shaped temporary support. Excavation of soil could then be carried out for the tunnel box of the subway. Throughout the process, construction activities had to be executed in extreme care in order not to affect the existing East Rail service. Another important structure was the 6.5 hectare maintenance center. This state-of-the-art depot comprises two buildings with a total gross floor area of 17,000 square meters, capable of stabling 80 train cars it houses the cleaning and maintenance facilities that support Ma An Shan Rail's operation. Civil works for Ma An Shan Rail progressed smoothly, with the entire project team working hard to achieve all major milestones on schedule. Are you ready? Railway project involves not only civil construction works, but also railway systems. Track laying of the more than 29 kilometers of track needed for the main line and the depot commenced in November 2002. Two types of track form were adopted, 12.8 kilometers of ballasted track and 16.3 kilometers of floating slab track. The floating slab track is supported on rubber bearings with a resilient base plate connecting the rail and the track slab. Together with the other noise reducing features of the viaduct and train cars, it ensures that noise levels at Ma An Shan Rail comply with the stringent noise control ordinance. A fleet of 72 ergonomically designed train cars was ordered. The total cost was $944 million. The first batch of trains arrived in Hong Kong in September 2003, and the last batch was delivered in May 2004.
All of the trains had to pass 100 kilometers of fault-free test runs before going into service. The installation of overhead lines, signaling systems, and other railway systems proceeded on schedule. To ensure safe and reliable operation from day one, KCRC began testing and commissioning in the second quarter of 2004. Full-scale trial runs were carried out in the last quarter of the year as scheduled. Ma'an Shan Rail was officially opened on the 21st of December 2004. Now in service, it provides a fast, convenient mode of travel to Chem Sa Choi in just 30 minutes. The Lok Ma Chow Spur Line, the third East Rail extension, was authorized in June 2002 by the Hong Kong Chief Executive in Council. As an alternative rail crossing into mainland China, it relieves congestion at Lo Wu, the only cross-boundary railway station prior to the opening of the Lok Ma Chow Spur Line. The 7.4 kilometer spur line branches off East Rail north of Sheng Shui and terminates at Lok Ma Chow Station. The railway runs in tunnel from Sheng Shui to Chow Tao, and then on viaduct from Chow Tao to the Lok Ma Chow terminus, with a total journey time of only six minutes. The greatest challenge of this project was constructing the railway in the environmentally sensitive Long Valley area. At first, KCRC had proposed building a viaduct over the Long Valley section of the alignment, but this raised concerns about the impact that construction and the operating railway line would have on the area. KCRC then proposed an alternative scheme, a tunnel under Long Valley and a viaduct for the remainder of the alignment. This option was seen as the best way to strike a balance between satisfying passenger demand and environmental needs. The spur line was packaged into four major civil contracts. The extension of Sheng Shui Station, the five kilometer tunnel section, the two kilometer viaduct section, and construction of the Lok Ma Chow Station. Construction works for the spur line officially commenced in January 2003. Three, two, one. And proceeded smoothly on schedule. Before full construction could begin, KCRC needed to carry out preliminary works. Since the five kilometers of tunnels would be excavated using a special underground tunnel boring machine, the first step was to build a launching shaft for the machine. A more difficult challenge was making room for the construction works north of Shang Shui. As the alignment of the Lok Ma Chow spur line branches out from East Rail north of Sheng Shui Station and cuts across the Dong Jiang water pipelines that provide Hong Kong's main source of drinking water, KCRC needed to divert the pipelines very carefully. What's more, the diversion had to be carried out in a short period of time. Fortunately, the pipelines are shut down for one month each year for maintenance and KCRC was able to finish the diversion works within that time. KCRC also needed to realign the uptrack and downtrack of East Rail, 
which had to be relocated for the spur line works. Again, works had to be carried out overnight, and timing was critical. Tracks were put back in place successfully in March and October 2005, respectively, with no interruption to East Rail services. To accommodate the additional flow of East Rail passengers bound for Lok Ma Chau, KCRC expanded the Sheng Shui Station. One of the most difficult tasks was the formation of the floor for the new concourse. To build the floor, 27 precast concrete T-beams were erected over the tracks. The 14-meter beams, weighing 18 tons each, were lifted by a 500-ton mobile crane. To ensure no disruption to regular train service along the main East Rail line, the works were carried out at night, after service hours. Since the environmental permit for the project specified that no construction work could be done at ground level in Long Valley, the corporation decided to use an earth pressure balanced tunnel boring machine. Called Mulan, after the famous heroine of Chinese folklore, the machine weighs about 1,600 tons. Including the cutter head, it has a total length of over 100 meters and a diameter of 8.75 meters. Mulan not only excavated the tunnels, but also grouted the ground and installed the tunnel lining as it progressed. The completed tunnels, running from Sheng Shui through Ku Tong to Chao Tao for about five kilometers, are the longest ever created by a tunnel boring machine in Hong Kong. Another innovative method was used for excavating three of the 12 emergency evacuation cross passages. This method, known as ground freezing, was chosen as it would not affect water levels in the ecologically sensitive Long Valley area. In a process never before used in Hong Kong, KCRC installed special freezing pipes to freeze the groundwater around the cross passages, forming a huge ice ring. By preventing water from seeping into the ground, ground freezing ensured that the manual excavation work could keep water levels stable in compliance with the stringent requirements of the environmental permit. It also eliminated the need for above ground construction work. The viaduct for the spur line is similar to the one at Ma'an Shan Rail. It also incorporates the innovative multi plenum design first developed at West Rail for containing train noise. By using the underslung method, this allowed the viaduct to be built without supporting false work, leaving the fish ponds underneath intact. Lok Ma Chau Station is the only station on the spur line. Four stories high, it covers an area of about nine hectares and houses immigration and customs facilities. As Hong Kong's second cross-boundary railway station, it connects with Shenzhen Metro Line 4 at the checkpoint in Futian via a pedestrian link bridge. Despite all these challenges, the civil works progressed without any major hitches.
After the civil construction works were completed, work began on the railway systems. A total of 15 kilometers of track was required for the 7.4 kilometer spur line. Three types of track forms were adopted. Low vibration track, floating slab track, and two low vibration floating turnouts. To minimize the impact of construction on the environment, the contractor made use of precast components for the floating slab track slabs. Standard 18 meter rails were welded into long rail strings of up to 200 meters at the site before being pulled into the tunnels or onto the viaducts. The rail strings were then fixed on either resilient base plates or precast concrete low vibration track blocks. Finally, they were propped up, leveled with the alignment, and permanently fixed into place with concrete. Using this top-down construction method not only eliminated the need for extensive on-site concreting works, but also helped ensure project quality and efficiency. The design of the overhead line was the same as the one used at East Rail. After the overhead line was energized in June 2006, KCRC began a series of tests before starting the commissioning process. The spur line signaling system is a natural extension of the one used for East Rail. It is controlled by the East Rail Control Center so that trains can run efficiently from East Chemsa Choi through all the East Rail stations, then on to either the Lok Ma Chow Terminus or Lo Wu. The signaling system was successfully integrated into the existing East Rail signaling system in June 2006. Test runs were then carried out during non-traffic hours, followed by daytime test runs during non-peak hours. Together with various government departments, KCRC tested station operations and border control facilities at the Lok Ma Chow Terminus. One of the unique features of the Spurline project is the provision of an enhanced ecological area of 37 hectares around the terminus for migratory birds. This is in compliance with what KCRC proposed in its Environmental Impact Assessment Report. The commissioning of the Lok Ma Chow Spur Line in 2007 marked the completion of the three East Rail Extension projects. It also underlined the corporation's ability to plan and build railways that take into account not only the needs of the traveling public, but also the environment. The completion of the spur line was on time for the celebrations of the 10th anniversary of the return of Hong Kong's sovereignty to China. For KCRC, this had special meaning because of the strategic importance of the spur line in creating closer ties between Hong Kong and the mainland. With all the extensions completed, passengers can enjoy greater traveling convenience than ever before. From the Lok Ma Chow or Lo Wu checkpoints, passengers can now take East Rail all the way to Chim Sa Choi without changing trains. For Ma and Shan Rail passengers, they can conveniently change trains to head towards Chim Sa Choi in the south or the boundary checkpoints in the north. The three extensions were all completed on schedule and within budget, strengthening the north-south rail corridor. Soon, the East Rail system will be even more convenient with the opening of the Kowloon Southern Link. This line will connect East Rail with West Rail, allowing passengers to travel between the eastern and western new territories as well as the heart of Kowloon, all in one system. One link further one step closer.